In a previous screencast, I showed you how to put a checkbox on a user form, as we see here. However, it had a flaw. You could check more than one button. So let's try a simple fix here. Again, the code that we need is under the Go button. And here was our simple code, just basically having a message box, you checked methane. So what we're going to do here is we're going to change this code up here. And instead of it just saying if methane, we're going to add and not ethane and not propane, then message box you checked methane. And we're going to do it for the rest of these. So now our code looks like this with our and nots for all of our choices. So let's go ahead up here and run it. So we'll start with checking methane, go, and it says you checked methane. Now let's see what happens if we check both of them. Nothing happens. Let's see now if we check ethane, you checked ethane. Let's see what happens if we don't check anything. Go. Nothing happens. Let's make this a little bit better so that the user has some idea of what's going on. So now we're going to put in, again, a very simple fix. What we'll say here is else if methane and ethane, which means they've both been checked, then message box and you can tell them specifically, you checked both methane and ethane. Please try again. So let's see what happens with this change. We'll go up here, we'll run our user form, and let's check both methane and ethane, and it says go. You check both methane and ethane, please try again. So what we can do is we can put that code for any combination, methane and ethane, ethane and propane, etc. So notice what I've done with the code over here. I basically did it for methane and ethane, if they are both checked, propane and ethane, if they're both checked, methane and propane, they're both checked. I even did it for all three. And finally, what if they don't check anything? I have an else here, which is, again, the only other option, message box, you need to check one of these boxes. So let's run this. And first, we'll start with none of the boxes check. Go. You need to check one of the boxes. OK. Well, let's try methane and ethane. Go. You check both methane and ethane. Please try again. So we've solved that problem. One of the next things that we can do is figure out a way after the user has checked one of the boxes and made a mistake, such as this, that we can get rid of these check marks and so the user can begin again. So how do we get rid of those, the checks in the check boxes, after the user has made a mistake? So let's go here, and it says, else if propane and ethane, then message box, you check both of them. And to reset the values, basically to zero, what you do is you type propane.value equals false, ethane.value equals false. Let's try and run this again. And remember, this is propane and ethane. So we'll start first with it normally running, and that worked. Notice this remained checked, and the code I just wrote will allow us to uncheck it. So if you recall, this was ethane and propane. And when we say go, you check both propane and ethane, try again, and notice that these check marks disappear. So for example, if we did this methane one, we can just write methane dot value again equals false. Let's see what happens when we run this now. And we check methane, and it says you checked methane, okay? 
and notice that the check mark goes away. So there are a number of other things that we can do with check boxes and list boxes and other controls in user forms, but I hope this gives you a little idea of how to use the checkbox control on a user form.